Good morning. Welcome to Morning Java, brought to you as always by our friends at the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where they're still open for business. They still have all of their offerings. Yeah, absolutely. The best ability is availability, as they say in sports. Oh, as and one gentleman who works Sundays in here says <laughs> on a regular <laughs> basis. That's really good. Um, we keep coming up with new and improved slogans for Get-Go here, do you based do on it. the times. It's endless, yeah. Uh, we obviously are at Heinz Field. We have football on the mind, mostly because football still exists in some abstract Ugh. form. They keep making news. I love it, and thank goodness for that. It's seriously, for me just personally, not even job related, just an awesome distraction to look at my phone <laughs> and not see the latest report on how the coronavirus is spreading across the state. Instead, seeing some football news, I'm like, this feels normal. This and kind we of saw it. Me. Actually, right before we started shooting, we yeah, saw right. that the NFL... Uh, and all 32 teams uh, have voted on and ratified an expanded playoff. Uh, I felt like, honestly, this was overdue. Yeah. Um, and by that, I don't mean in the context of this year or the virus or anything. I thought for years the NFL playoff felt like it was a little too small for 30, you know, of a 32 team field. I definitely agree. It's super competitive, and it's crazy to think of that. You know, hockey has eight. Dale made a great point before when I was talking to him, and it, I guess you kind of realize it, but it never fully registers until somebody points it out, that the Steelers would have made the playoffs every year of Tomlin's career if there were seven. Oh, yeah, so last two like years. So if it was like eight, shoe in every year. Yeah, we wouldn't be talking about Jesse James right. being over the line right. or, 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 or remember the day they were sitting here at Heinz Field <laughs> under helmets <laughs> looking up at the scoreboard oh, with the sad the faces and that then trudging off. Okay, I mean – I'm not suggesting that we should rewrite history and those are now playoff teams. Sure. The format you have is the format you have. But at the same time, uh, I, I just like the idea of more teams in it. Um, yeah. The NFL is already, because of the salary cap and everything else, has long been the fairest, most equitable league. Mm -hmm. um, their ability to turn Green Bay, Wisconsin, a, a, a city that you can barely even call a city. It, it's, sure. it's north for sales, okay? <laughs> um, into, I saw in doing some other research recently that Green Bay was the eighth most valuable franchise in the NFL. That's Think beautiful. about it. And they're owned Bay. by, like, the people yeah. Yeah. who bought stock. They're the eighth most valuable franchise worth a billion and a half dollars. It's incredible. Um, that, that's, that's phenomenal stuff. That's very NFL. Even then, I felt like there should have been more more teams in. I just I just love to see more uh, cities engaged, more fans engaged, more games that mean something on, I was about to say week 17, but now, I'm yeah. oh, sorry, week six, 16, it'll now be week 17. Sure. And the point there being, for me, it feels weird whenever only six teams get in that some teams get cut out. And I, just, I know I take this one to the grave. I've written about it several times. Two years ago, that Steelers team was a playoff team. Yes. The 9-6-1 and one team. They were legit. They, they were absolutely They were legit. on a roll, which is what you want. That number one trait you can have yep. in the NFL. It felt so bizarre in. that they weren't in the playoffs when it started. No, I mean, they beat the Patriots towards the end of that season. They were right there with the Saints. That's, for They should me, have beaten the Saints. Absolutely should have beaten the Saints. That's, like, the in example New Orleans. for me. <laughs> yeah. In New Orleans. Yeah, right. I, I, that, that season, yeah, that's a good one. Because you look at their record, and for every time – that you're going to see or hear an argument over the next couple of days. I refer to this as kind of like the Tennessee principle, which is the Titans, not last year, but the Titans are always that team that's mm -hmm. like seven and nine, eight <laughs> yep. and eight. You Just know right what I mean? There. Just right there. And if you're going to see a seven and nine team make yep. it in Absolutely. one conference or the other, and everyone's going to go, what a joke, the playoffs now, they look like hockey and basketball and whatever else. No, you're going to get a team – that goes in and goes on a roll. Now, the other question is, you now, as the number two seed, lose the bye. Right. And I haven't heard many people talk about that. The only yeah. team that gets a bye in, in the first week of playoffs is the number one overall seed in the conference. Any thoughts there? Oh, I personally love that. I feel like that's how it should be regardless. Two seed, we've seen never a weak two seed, but relatively weak compared to three and four. You know what I mean? Or even five and six sometimes are stronger than three and four. But the two not getting a bye, sure, earn it. Because we've seen so many times, even just last year, the Ravens, the number one seed, come off the bye and just get bounced. It's not always That's the best That's what teams. I was about to yeah, say. It's not here. always the okay. best. Okay. For every football team that when they get to the end of the regular season, and I've covered a few of them here, 
and they, <laughs> they've they've been the number one or the number two seed. They're so happy. They're oh, this is great. We earned it. We got the week off. Now we now we uh, hey, how are you? <laughs> Dude just yelled out hello in Serbian. That That's was actually awesome. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, I forget now. <laughs> totally, oh, number one totally seed. Threw me off. He just wouldn't yeah, let yeah. it go either. Yeah, that he was, was great. like. Ah. <laughs> um, They'll say it's great. We got the we got the buy. Mm. We got the buy, and then they get to that buy, and then they're like, "Oh, we wish we were playing." Right. And then you're Baltimore, and you go out there against that red hot team, or, or well, the Titans. Exactly. The Titans were that team last year with with Mike Vrabel having them all pumped up and everything, and then you lose, and then you lose. And that's it. Yeah, and yep. that's it. Eric Ebron mm. has some game. He's good. On social, <laughs> oh, I don't know if swerve. people have appreciated. Yeah, 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 he's even getting into people's replies and mentions. He does not appreciate. Was that guy from Cleveland? Yeah, no, he was absolutely from. Is that I know, who you I know what you're talking uh, okay. about. Yep. So there's this guy who just got on Twitter and just starts mouthing off on a video, for like from his living room or whatever, about yep. individual Steelers and. He really went at Ebron. He was like, yeah. he's not even the best tight end on his team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, putting him like below, not only Vance McDonald, but below Ben if Ben converted right, right, to right. tight end this year because of Ben's sure. beard and being overweight. Sure. It was just so Obviously Cle- a tight end. It was end. so Cleveland. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so Ebron <laughs> comes in at this guy. It was like, like one or two words or whatever. But he's confident. Yeah. He should be. Oh, I love it. When he was healthy. And he had an NFL quarterback behind center, meaning Andrew Luck, two years ago. He caught 13 touchdowns for the Indianapolis Colts. And they were big league. In a couple of cases, elite touchdowns. He should feel like he is the best tight end in the AFC North, which, by the way, was the beginning of the argument of the Cleveland idiot. Yeah, and Ebron slid in and said, I am. I think that's all he said. That was all he said, yeah. Yeah. And I love it. You know who he actually reminds me of? And I think I may have tweeted this or just tweeted it in my mind. I'm not even sure. (laughs) Reminds me of Steven Nelson on social a lot last year where it's like, why is this dude so confident? Because there were question marks about him. Nobody really knew what Nelson was all about. But when when you follow him on social, I was like, this dude believes in himself. Like well, he's, you got to know him probably right. as, as well as anybody on our staff over the past season, and, yeah. and we got to see that absolutely in his in his demeanor as yep. well. In fact, yep. in addition to the fact that he did show everyone, no one talks about Stephen Nelson. I saw in Dale's live cues today somebody suggested the Steelers pick up Dre Fitzpatrick to play opposite Hayden. I was like. They got the guy opposite Hayden. You don't need him. No, no, <laughs> like, no. do we forget about Steven you know, Nelson that much? But if you're Eric Ebron and you're coming in feeling that good, um, look, all athletes who have injury troubles or injury issues will come in as determined as they can be and look at me. I'm in the greatest shape of my life, and you never question their resolve or whatever. At least not. I mean, unless you're like Lonnie Chisholm, the rest of mix, mixing sports here or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Stefan Tuit is the one that kind of jumps to mind for me because mm. Stefan comes in so passionate. This is my year, 16 games. Yep. I'm going to make it. I'm, in fact, last year he was different. He was like, I'm not even going to talk about it. Yeah, I actually asked him about it, and I got the immediate read. I was like, shouldn't have asked it. <laughs> I, I, he, he's just, okay, this year I'm not going to talk about it. Sure enough, halfway into the season. Yeah, yep. Uh, so it's not a matter of how determined they are or whatever, but if, if he comes in feeling good about himself – as an elite tight end. Yeah. Uh, Vance McDonald's never lacked no. that confidence. Why couldn't slash shouldn't these guys, meaning Ebron and McDonald, and since we're going to go at the Cleveland guy, why shouldn't they be better than Austin Hooper? Why? There's no reason why. why. You don't become the number 10 overall pick As a, a position. Draft. As right. a position. There's nothing that's holding them back at this point besides availability, like we said. Can't cash on that. Hooper is very good. I'm not taking anything he, away from He Hooper. had some very, very good. T- two terrific years, 146 total catches over the last two years with the Falcons. Yeah. Uh, and not a particularly great Atlanta team. Nope. Nope. Not fantastic. But we've seen tight ends work in Pittsburgh. Ebron with is. With this quarterback. With that quarterback. That's kind of the key here, right? And Ebron is by far the most physically talented they've had 
in my lifetime. I mean, this dude's almost a receiver playing tight end, just huge, athletic. You mentioned kind of the circus catches. He has that ability. If he pieces it all together, it will be special. Yeah, and that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. It really will, especially, especially if Randy Feetner decides, A, <laughs> sorry, to it's too it. easy <laughs> to throw over the middle of the football sure. field, and, uh, and, and, and B, I don't even have a B. Just throw no. over the middle of the football field. No, and I got to edit myself. If I said Dre Fitzpatrick, Kirkpatrick, Oh, I think obviously. you did, yeah, Kirkpatrick. I caught it afterwards. I was like, did I just really say that? Anyway. You didn't say Dr. Dre. Edit it. <laughs> you know what stinks? Tell me. Being here. It does. Like, you would think <laughs> that really this would does. somehow be this cathartic thing where we'd come here and it would be... It's just sad. Yeah, it's not good. Like, oh, at least we're close to where we would normally be working or where people would be streaming through the gates. Yeah. It, it just makes it worse. It's so strange. And our, unfortunately, our phones make it a little worse. It happened to you when we were sitting here, your Wi-Fi connected to the press box. I saw, yeah, phone, it, so it's it like said all press you are in the press box. And, and then and it's like, just no, extra I'm not sad. In the press it's like, box. oh, I really should be there right now or this should be happening. So but especially when you hear this is this is a cool day. We got a wind going by here and you're thinking, you know, it feels like Steelers weather, honestly. Yeah, which I mean, I understand they wouldn't be playing this time sure. of year. And ideally, they'll still start on time. It's just this is this is a bummer. It's bizarre, and you have to pass PNC Park to get here, or I do, the way I come, and it's just extra set. Now, granted, that place is never super full anyway, See, but... See, no one can <laughs> resist these. <laughs> but, better than it is right now. I saw a tweet the other day. It was pretty hilarious. It was like, I just want to be in the sun at PNC Park watching the Pirates lose right now. I was yeah, like, I, mean, I they, get they it. They, the can't, they go job, that far point, into point. it and still yeah. can't I know. Re resist... Uh, the cheap shot. Now, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, we're only a couple weeks <laughs> into this. By all accounts, you know, now everybody's talking about, you know, June, whatever. I mean, you keep hearing all these months and years and decades and millennia and everything else guessing. here, and everybody's just, guessing. everybody's just guessing. But at the same time, um, I, you know, I have allowed myself at different junctures to picture. Mm -hmm. what a first sporting event mm. will be like nice. with the people in there. And I can also picture, I don't know if you thought about this, but the teams, you know how um, teams will honor military sure. or whatever else. I could see, you know, especially, you know, we're blessed to have some classy operations here uh, in Pittsburgh who are very civically aware right. of things, bringing out, Doctors, oh, that would be, and nurses, that would be so and they're cool. for standing ovations and stuff like that. Like these are the people who help save yeah. lives and stuff like that. Um, but mostly just people, and then high fiving <laughs> right. each other, and you and know, the, the and, players are going to be amped as well. I mean, you know, how opening day is for any sport anywhere. This is going to be opening day times a thousand. Oh, it's just it's, so it, much potential for chills. Yeah, and I love that. Yeah, unbelievable. Well. <laughs> Thank you.